In this video, I'll show you how to add MCP servers to your Claude Code agents. Claude Code already provides a few different tools to the agents, like the ability to write files and to search the web. But by adding MCP servers, we can take the capabilities of our agents to a whole new level. Now, there are already hundreds, if not thousands, of MCP servers out there that can get your agent to do pretty much whatever you want, from connecting to GitHub, to updating databases, or to do things like send email. So in this video, I'll show you the fundamentals of adding any MCP server to your Claude Code agents. But first, it's important to understand that there are different types of MCP servers. With the standard I.O. transport, the MCP server is basically downloaded and executed on your own machine. This means that the bulk of the processing could happen on your own machine, or the server might still do outgoing calls, like API calls, to a remote server. But these types of MCP servers are ideal for locally run processes. Then you get the SSE and the HTTP transports, and both of these are basically remote MCP servers. So this means the MCP server is hosted on some remote server, and we're simply creating a connection between our agent and that remote server. Now, SSE is considered a legacy transport and has been replaced by the streamable HTTP server. Either way, the configuration for both of these types of servers are identical. Now, these remote servers are actually the easiest to set up, so we'll start with those, and then we'll have a look at adding a standard I.O. server to our Claude Code agent. And for Windows users, I'll show you how to set up the server without requiring WSL. So, jumping back to Claude Code, and I am running Claude Code in an IDE at the moment, but if you wanted to, you could of course just use the terminal or command prompt. Either way will work. The only prerequisite is that you already have Claude Code set up on your machine, and if you would like to learn how, I'll link to the setup video in the description of this video. So, in Claude Code, if I execute it front slash MCP, we can see that I currently don't have any MCP server set up. So, let's add our first server. First, I'm going to exit out of Claude Code, and then in the terminal, let's run Claude, MCP, and list. This will also show us all the available MCP servers. Since we don't have any, we're getting this tip saying, use Claude MCP add to add a server. So let's actually go ahead and add our first server. For coding tasks, I highly recommend adding Context 7 to your agents. Context 7 is a massive repository of up-to-date technical documentation. So when your agent is implementing a new feature, you could get it to first reference the up-to-date docs before implementing that feature. Context 7 comes with an MCP server, so if we click on this link, this takes us to the Context 7 GitHub repo, and on this page, we can see installation instructions for many MCP clients, including Claude Code. When we expand this, we can actually see setup instructions for all those different protocols. We have the HTTP protocol, the legacy SSE protocol, and standard I.O. by running an npx command. Now, don't worry too much about what this all means, we will cover it in a minute. So let's have a look at adding any of these remote servers to our agents. So first I'm going to copy this command, but before we add it to Claude Code, let's take a minute to break this down to see what this command actually does. And with this understanding, you'll be able to add any MCP server to your Claude Code agents. Let's actually change the color of this, and just above it, let's go over this command. So to add servers, we have to run the command Claude MCP add. Then we have to specify the transport of the server by entering dash dash transport, followed by either HTTP or SSE. So I'll simply add these in square brackets. Then we have to provide the name of the server. And do take note, this can be anything. Although this example shows that the name is context seven, we could really call this whatever we want. Then after the name, we have to specify the path or the URL to that MCP server. So I'll simply add URL, and this is typically followed by something like front slash SSE or MCP when we're using the HTTP protocol. Either way, we'll expect some URL like this example over here. Now, optionally, we can also pass header information 
by adding dash dash header followed by the actual values that need to be passed in the header. These could include things like API keys or secrets. For example, we could pass something like authorization with a value of bearer followed by some API key. All right, so now that we have a better understanding of how these remote servers work, let's copy this context seven setup and back in our terminal, let's run that command and now we get a message saying that this HTTP MCP server called context 7 was added along with this URL. And very important, it's saying that this was added to local config, which means the server is available to the specific instance or project, but we will have a look at scoping in a minute. Now, if we run Claude MCP list, we can see that context 7 was indeed added. And if we run Claude again, and front slash MCP, we can see that context seven was added and the status is currently connected. If we enter into this, we can see that there are two tools available in the server and these are the two tools. Cool. So that is how we can connect remote servers. And next we'll have a look at adding standard IO servers with a few tips for my Windows viewers. But I think before we do that, let's also have a look at scope. When we added the server, it said that the server is now available in our local config. Now, watch what happens if I open up another project. So in this project, if I run Claude MCP list, it says that we actually don't have any servers configured. And that is because of scoping. As per the Claude documentation, we get three different levels of scope. We have local scope, and this means that the server is only available to the specific user at a project level. So other users working on the same project will not have access to that server. With project scope, the MCP server will actually be added at project level, ensuring that all team members have access to that same MCP server as well. And with user scope, these MCP servers are added at a global level which means the server will be available to the user spanning all the different projects. Now, to specify the scope, all we have to do is after the server name, enter dash s and then the name of the scope, like local or project or user. Now, I'm not going to do it for this tutorial, but I just briefly wanted to show you how to set scope on these MCP servers. Next, let's have a look at adding standard IO servers to our agent. Now for this, we're going to look at two very different examples. First, we'll have a look at a very simple example. We'll simply add context seven using the standard IO protocol, but then we'll move on to something a bit more complex, which actually involves adding environment variables as well, like API keys. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the server we currently have. So we've got context seven, that's using the HTTP transport, I'm actually going to remove this by calling Claude MCP remove followed by context seven. And that is how you remove MCP servers. Then let's copy this example. And of course, let's first break it down to see how these commands work. First, we start with the command Claude MCP add, then we can specify the name of the server. Then we have to specify the command that needs to be executed in this node environment. So when we enter double dash, it means that the following value will be the command that needs to be executed. In this example, it's npx. Now this, I'm simply going to call the command. Then after this, we need to specify the list of arguments. So I'll simply call this arc1, arc2, and arc3. In the below example, dash y is an argument and this package name is the second argument. So let's actually just call this arc1 and arc2. Another nice way to visualize this is to look at this config object. And if you've ever added the server to something like cursor or claw desktop, then this object might seem familiar to you. In this object, we provide the name of the server followed by the command and then an array of arguments. This is exactly what we're doing here. We're providing the command followed by the arguments. Now, if we wanted to pass in environment variables, what we'd have to do is directly after the name, we could pass in dash E followed by the environment variable name. For instance, something like API key, 
is equal to some value. If you wanted to pass in additional environment variables, all you would do is pass another dash E, followed by the name of the variable, and of course, the value itself. But these are optional. And we will have a look at such an example in this video as well. For now, let's add the server by going back to our terminal. Let's paste in that command and press enter. Now, if you get this message saying unknown option dash Y, I suggest switching over to something like command prompt or a different type of terminal and then running that command again. This is saying that we've now added a standard IO server called context 7 with a command npx y to local config. And by the way, you might have noticed that we didn't have to specify the transport as we did with the remote servers where we add this dash dash transport. And you can actually add this if you wanted to. So you could just say dash dash transport standard IO, but the default value for the transport is actually standard IO. So therefore we could just omit this. Right, so now that we've added our server, what we can do is open up Claude. And if we enter slash MCP, I get the status of failed, but for Mac, Linux and Windows users using WSL, the server should now be connected and working. Now, because I'm not using WSL on my Windows machine, this connection failed. So let me show you how to resolve this. First, I'm going to remove this current setup and then let's edit this command slightly. And again, this is only for Windows users not using WSL. So instead of running npx as the command, we'll run cmd instead, followed by front slash c. Then we'll run the rest of the command as is. And then at the end of this package, let's also add at latest. And let's run this. All right, it's saying the server was added. Let's run Claude. And then let's run slash MCP. And now we can see the server is indeed connected on a Windows machine, not using WSL. Let's have a look at a slightly more advanced example, which requires environment variables. So for this, we're actually going to add the Bright Data MCP server. Now this video is not sponsored by Bright Data, but it is a great MCP server for scraping data using agents. And if we scroll down, to the setup instructions, we can see that the command that it needs to execute is npx and it uses this package. But we can also see that this server actually requires an API key to be passed along as well. In fact, it supports multiple environment variables like API tokens and the web unlocker zone. I already have a dedicated video on setting up Bright Data and getting the API key. So I'm not going to go into detail on how to do that in this video, so to set this up, I've logged into my Bright Data account. You can do the same by going to brightdata.com and then signing into your account. Then let's go to account settings and I'm just going to refresh this API key and I'm just going to note down this API key. And please be sure to use your own key as I am going to refresh this one after this recording. Then let's go to proxies and scraping and let's also note down the name of this web unlocker zone. Mine is called Web Unlocker 2. All right, so now that we have our environment variables, how do we now set up this MCP server using what we've learned so far? Well, first off, we know that we're dealing with a standard IO server here, since it's trying to run a command. So if we had to adapt it to what we've learned, we know that we can give this some name, like bright data, and then for the command, we can see that they've got the command set as npx, so let's copy that across. And then for the arguments, they only have one argument and that's this at bright data slash MCP package. And now we also have to pass in these environment variables. And what we learned was that after the name, we can add dash E followed by the name of the environment variable, like so, and then equals, which we'll add in a second and we also have to specify this web unlocker zone. You could try to run this command without setting the web unlocker zone, that this value is optional, but it will try to default to MCP unlocker. And because my web unlocker is called something like web unlocker 2, this connection will actually fail. So I'm going to pass in the web unlocker zone, 
like so. And in order to add a second environment variable, we can add dash e followed by web unlocker zone and then the name of our zone. So this gives us the full structure of this command. I'm actually just going to add in my API key and for the web unlocker zone, let's add that as well. And now I can run this full command and that should add the server to Claude. So if I run Claude, I'm getting a connection failure, but it will work for you. But because I'm using Windows with LWSL, I need to adjust this command. So what I need to do is change the command from npx to cmd, followed by front slash, and then the rest of the stuff stays the same. Let's run this in command prompt. All right, so it's added the server. Let's run Claude. And this time I'm not seeing any errors. So let's run front slash mcp. And look at that. Now we have both bright data and context seven loaded. Let's test this out then. First, let's ask what are route handlers in Next.js? Use context seven. And let's run this. All right, the agent's asking our permission to run this command. And we can see that it is indeed trying to use a tool from context seven. So this is working. Let's approve the tool call. I'll approve this one as well. And cool, we get our answer back. And the agent was able to answer this question using up-to-date documentation from context seven. Let's try another example using Bright Data's web scraper. Let's ask it to scrape data from this OpenAI news article. So I'm going to copy this URL. And then let's ask the agent, please summarize this article and add the results to a file called summary.md. And I'll paste in that URL. Let's press enter. And it seems the agent actually wants to use its built-in fetch function. So I'm actually going to say no. And let's say use the bright data web scraper tool instead. And that's better. So it's trying to use the bright data scrape as a markdown tool. So let's approve this. And now it's trying to write a file. Let's approve this. And there we go. We have this summary.md file. Let's just close the terminal for a second. And there we go. We got the summary of that article by using the bright data web scraping tool. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. Also, let me know in the comments what other Claude code features I should cover. Also, YouTube seems to think you'll like this next video, so click on the card on the screen right now. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.